Okay, okay. I'm gonna show you how I painted one of these clouds. Just because I can't stand it. I mean, I do clouds. So uh, the way I the way I did these is with these primers. I've got red, yellow, and blue. Did I make? Okay, I'm gonna turn these so that you can see them. See those colors? I can't leave it too long. They'll spill. See? So they're light. I've got a light blue, a light red, which is pink, and a light yellow. And then I've got white. That's my fourth color. This is a very common color scheme uh, for me is to use red, yellow, blue, and white. <clears throat> but these are a modified red, yellow, and blue. They're all lightened because it saves me a lot of trouble. I mean, if I was using the bold primaries on this, then I would have to lighten them all as I was mixing and it saves me time to just mix them ahead of time. And I went over that earlier in, uh, earlier on in this job. So let's put a cloud up here. So this is what I do. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have two different brushes. One, one for the light colors, one for the dark colors. So let me go grab a brush okay? right here. Don't want to be making a mess. Get back over here. Let's start with the blue and white. Okay, I'm just gonna grab these two colors and I'm gonna put a cloud somewhere where it's not gonna make my picture suck. I'm gonna make it look better. So I, I think this is a pretty uninteresting area right about here. And I could add to this perspective if I kind of put one and transition between this guy and this guy, so probably like boom, boom. So that'll be a, probably a beneficial place to put one. Now I'm, I'm using this dark color. See this dark color that I did the tops of these guys with? That's what I'm gonna do first. And you know why that's dark like that? I'm gonna tell you why. Because that is the top of the cloud that is in the shadow of all of these clouds that are in front of it. So this big cloud back here is getting hit from behind by the sun. And it's illuminating the whole cloud from within. And, but then the cloud is thick enough that it's got a shadow here. It's stopping the light, but it's, it's a combination. This real purpley blue There's a combination of the red light in there mixing with the blue shadow of these clouds and so it, it's in between you see it's in between this dark shadow and this red light but then these clouds are closer to you and all these other clouds that are getting hit by the light are casting a shadow they're in the way so that the tops of these are not getting hit by as much light and that's what happens with clouds because clouds let some light through then the more distant clouds will be lighter because you're seeing some of the light come through but then as you put more and more clouds in front of it, it's like putting transparencies over each other. So it gets darker and darker, so you create a lot of depth that way. But the underside of these dark clouds is still getting hit directly by the sun. You know, it's down here shining from underneath. All right, I'm good? Clear on that explanation? <laughs> Let's do the cloud. So I think we'll put a puffy cloud right here. Watch, this is simple. We're gonna, I'm, I'm following my same rules as I, that I do in my video, how to shape a cloud or, or how to paint clouds in a room. You could refer to that one. And I want this one to look kind of close, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll kind of smear these edges with my finger to fog it out a little bit, make it look like a closer, closer, more foggy looking cloud. But I'm going with just a general kind of arched top. I think I'll bring it up higher. Shoot, maybe we'll even interfere, you know, a little bit of contrast there won't hurt. Put it coming up there in front of that. I like to use my fingers a lot. Totally unnecessary. That's just fun, I like to do that. All right, then I've, I've got that while it's still wet and it's drying fast. I've got a bucket of water down here that I'll dip into. I'm just putting water on this right now. Okay, then, then I'll get my white. white in my hand, that's this other gallon, and I'll just put little bits of this white, that's too much, it's way too much, I'm going to wipe that on this drop cloth in here, 
Okay, and then I'm just kind of doing curved strokes, kind of following the shape of, of the, you know, following the perimeter of the cloud, just doing these curved strokes. They're going to start blending together more and more. I'm going to get more of my dark color, like this. It's not real important, you know, doing cloud, I mean, you're going to be looking at this from a distance. It's not real important. That, that we get down to the nitty gritty on doing like all the little puffs of the cloud. And, I mean, I like to get into that sometimes, but for this, I mean, actually the, the more I paint murals, the more I realize that that kind of detail just, I mean, it's, you really just don't need it. I mean, that's, I do it just cause I can, you just don't need it. Yeah, I'm fiddling with this way too long. I mean, I, I'm not even stepping back and looking at it. For all I know, I'm just wasting my time. But Mixing the dark blue, actually it's a light blue, and the white. Okay, and then, oh, oh. Put a little more white down here, okay? You see this? All right, then, then what I'm gonna do is move to my bright color. If I could just dry this brush off. If I dry that brush off, I just kind of smeared it on the drop cloth, then I can very quickly drag it across here with a real light touch, and it'll blend all of those shapes. And then I have a, a much softer looking cloud, and then I can go and run over it again like this and get sharper, you know. I mean, you can mess around with it and come up with your own ways of your own ways of killing valuable time. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to move to the to the pink and yellow, right? And a clean brush, right? You're gonna love how simple this is. Put the brush in the paint. Put it on the wall. All right. I'm gonna add some yellow. Now I want to make sure that I get this appropriately gauged, you know, with how, how red. So, you know, it needs to be consistent with these guys. So it's gonna be mostly the red color. The bottom of this, I want it to look like you're looking up at it. So I need the bottom of it to be rounded to a degree. All right, so I'm just gonna start blending this up. This paint is still just barely wet enough. And I'll show you that this cloud, see how this it has kind of a littler hump here and a bigger one here? Where the bigger hump is represents a larger cloud, you know, that's fused together with the smaller cloud. So the bottom of a larger cloud is going to be bigger. So I'm going to make, I'm going to make this section go up further than this section so that it creates a more three-dimensional looking cloud. Right there. So, right now, you know what's happening is, is I'm getting my <laughs> you can't hear it. I'm getting my paint mixed together. Okay, I'm gonna blend this right here. There's just not a lot of places to put my tools. All right. Okay, what I was saying was it's, it's blending my paint together a lot, so I'm getting a real dirty color here. So I might have to come back after that dries and add more of this bright color. But I can just put it on heavier right now to see if I can get it brighter. You see how that's nice and bright right there. And I just won't, I won't blend it too much. I'll just kind of put it on and leave it. And then if I dry this brush off a little bit, just drag it across there real quick. It blends that, blends those edges. You don't want to do that too many times. After I, after I let this dry for a little while, I'll come back and detail it with the little brush, just like I did all this stuff down here. That's how I did all these clouds, it was just like that. And then maybe it'd be cool to, maybe it'd be cool to add a little bit of, you know, like a, make a connector, you know? Here. I love doing clouds. Right. 
It's rude to talk with paintbrush in your mouth. 